The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Welcome to Wonderfully Made. This program is uh, brought to you today to discuss a very interesting topic, one that is probably a change from what we have usually used. We're going to talk today about meat-based diets. And in order to do that, I have with me in the studio Mr. Stoy Proctor, who is an adjunct professor of nutrition at Loma Linda University. He's also associate director in the General Conference Health Ministries Department. But he is, in addition to that, chairman of the General Conference Nutrition Council. In that, he deals with many nutritionists from universities throughout the country. And I'm very, very pleased to have him here. We recognize that 97% of the population in North America eats meat and has their diet as a meat-based diet. That means that only 2 to 3% are vegetarians. You are used to seeing vegetarians and hearing vegetarians on this program, but today we would like to see if it is possible uh, to have a basically fairly healthy meat-based diet. Stoy, I'd like to welcome you to our program. Thank you. Good to be here. The first question that I have for you is, is it possible to have a healthful meat-based diet? I think so. It is. It is? It is. And how is it possible? Well, 97% of the people are, um, are living, and many of them are living to 80 and 90 and 100 years old. So it's possible. Is it an optimal diet? Well, uh, probably not the most optimal diet. I think we'll get into studies, scientific studies, showing that, that uh, if you do not eat meat, you might have some advantages. But, uh, but I'd like to share with our audience, and of course we really don't need to with our audience, but for those that are maybe vegetarian, why meat is used as one of the stable foods. Yes, if, 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 if there are so many people using meat... There meat, must be a good reason. There must be some reason. Maybe you could tell us some of the apparent advantages of a meat-based diet. Good. Number one, I think convenience. Now. Uh, you and I do a lot of traveling, and we, eat, we have to eat in a lot of restaurants. And meat's almost always available. And of course, locally, uh, especially towns, uh, smaller towns throughout North America and throughout the world, there are small restaurants, and almost all of them are, um, uh, uh, serve uh, uh, several dishes of meat. Uh, beef, chicken, uh, fish, uh, all different cuts of meats. And so it's very convenient. Uh, to and it's uh, available everywhere in North America. In fact, I think a lot more people would be meat eaters if they had the money to buy it and if it was available. But meat is in short supply. So convenience is number one. Uh, two is I think it's, uh, it, it's life sustaining in the short run. Uh, we take our pioneers, uh, you know, when they were traveling across North America uh, or Australia, across Australia or across Africa, Anyway, where there's been pioneers, you know, they couldn't stop and grow a crop, grow soybeans or grow corn or grow uh, vegetables. They killed their meat. So it's quite convenient. I, and uh, I grew up in Texas, and so I'm a little bit familiar, and I grew up around ranch people. So I know some of the advantages they say, uh, and they've given me for, for the, the meat diet. And one is that there's certain areas of, let's say, West Texas, where it may take a hundred acres of land to, to sustain one cow. But that one cow will be sustained by those acreage. Whereas if you try to grow some corn or soybeans out there without water, without fertilizer, you won't be able to do it. And there's places like the Arctic, Arctic circles, where it's very, very cold, where the Eskimos live, you know. Uh, what would they do? They can't grow uh, colored and kale and carrots and uh, apples and oranges. You know, it all has to be imported, or they eat the local food. So there's a matter of convenience you know, there, this morning, and, and, and option. 
This morning, I watched you eat your breakfast. You shouldn't have done that. Oh, I did. <laughs> I mean, I saw you had half an apple. I'm going to tell our I'm going to tell our viewers what he had for breakfast. You had half an apple. You had about a glass full of soy milk. You had some uh, shredded wheat, whole wheat, shredded wheat with a little almonds and I think a little honey on it. I saw you had two slices of whole wheat bread on which you put some peanut butter, which was nutty, crumbly, and it was a special brand. I saw you purchase it. You wouldn't have any of those artificial things in there, just this pure nut uh, peanut butter. You put on some blueberry, uh, which we again carefully selected because it was you're, you're a bit of a fattest about your food. So you put this blueberry preserves on top of that. Then I saw you had a handful of grapes, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, you drank a glass of orange juice. I did. Pretty good breakfast. And here you are talking about the advantages of a meat-based diet. You know, it's taking my breath away. You've blown my cover. <laughs> but I think we have to admit, uh, you know, people eat meat throughout the world for, for different reasons, and some of them are fairly good reasons. They talk about protein. Is and that important? A, well, actually, meat provides a very high-quality protein. It, it contains all the 10 or 11 essential amino acids. It contains all the amino acids, which are about 22, but it contains the, the 9 or 10 essential ones. So it's a high-quality protein. Uh, it's, and I said earlier, it's good for sustaining life in the short run, for sure, because what would have our pioneers done in, in the past had they not been able to eat a little fresh venison, deer, or turkey, or, or peasant, pheasant, or something like that. So it's convenient in that way. But there's another reason, too. It's, it has some nutrients besides protein. It has, uh, it's, it's full of, um, of a good bioavailable, that means a body can use it, use all of it, uh -huh. iron. It's called heme iron. Whereas the non-heme iron, which we find in plant foods, is sometimes not as bioavailable. Not, in other words, it's not as usable to the body. Uh, although it, we, uh, as a vegetarian, we can be sustained very nicely on plant foods and get all the iron we need. But let's just face it, the iron in the beef and chicken and so on is more bioavailable. Uh, zinc, the same thing. And that's one area vegetarians have to have a pro they have a problem getting enough zinc. I do a lot of dietary recalls and looking at the nutrient profile of individuals of what they eat all day long and that's for maybe a week or so and I find that many vegetarians are low in zinc. And part of the reason is that the the plant food don't have as much zinc as we might find in some of the animal products and second is not as bioavailable. Another nutrient that is found very, very plentifully in, in meat is vitamin B12. And uh, now for a vegetarian that uses milk or eggs, that's not a problem. But for vegetarians that don't use any animal products, and some people like to call themselves vegan, I would rather call themselves total vegetarians, uh, but um, they now have a real challenge. They must find some outside source of vitamin B12. Uh, whereas a meat eater doesn't have to worry about that uh, if they're in good normal health. Is uh, my mouth open? You know, as no. I listen, do you think that uh, as you listen to Stoy here, I, we have to ask this question. I, I just have to ask him this question. Why are you a vegetarian if this meat is so good? Actually, even though my parents, until I, and I went to live my, with my grandmother at 14, but my parents ate meat, I ate clean meat beef, chicken, deer, venison, and so on. But actually, I never liked it. Uh, and I was basically born a vegetarian. And so that's one reason. But there's some other reasons. Uh, I'm a vegetarian because even though meat has some advantages, and we've discussed some that. of those, it has some disadvantages as well. And uh, maybe if you would like, we can discuss some of those disadvantages. All right, let's, let, let's, let's look at, at, you talked about the good things in meat. And one has to say there are good things in meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what about fiber? Well, there, <laughs> I'm embarrassed now because I've got to say that meat contains zero fiber. Zero fiber? Zero fiber. Do you know any benefits of fiber? Oh, yes, there's many benefits <laughs> of fiber. Yeah. All right, that we get from whole grain, uh, breads and cereals and, and fruits and vegetables, legumes, nuts. All these are high fiber foods. and 
actually we should be getting 25 to 30, maybe 25, 30 to 50 grams of fiber per day. But if you eat mostly a meat-based diet, you're not going to get any fiber. And that's a problem in some, er, some areas, especially one area. We'll talk about it a little later, I think. We may do that. Yeah. Okay. Now, there's so, another thing I want to ask you about. When I look at a slab of meat in the supermarket, uh, and I don't see much fat, maybe they cut the fat off. Have we gotten rid of the saturated fats? We've got rid of some of it, but probably what we haven't got rid of is the cholesterol. In any lean piece of meat, or even with chicken when you take the skin off, it still has probably 80 to 100 milligrams of cholesterol. No. And of course, we, we're, it's recommended that we get no more than, in fact, we get less than 300 milligrams a day. And so, you know, three ser a, a, a serving of full fat milk, a piece of cheese, and uh, a little bitty piece of meat is going to give us 300 milligrams. And so uh, to keep that cholesterol down and keep that saturated fat down, uh, we're going to have to cut down our meat some. My folks, uh, my family, my, my, my in-law family, who I love dearly because, you know, I, I, I have great relationship with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've been farmers and they've taught me a lot about agriculture. One of the things that they taught me was that there are new breeds of beef that they have developed. And they say these special beef have been bred so that the fat is marbled throughout the, me the, the meat itself. What does that mean? So that means you can't trim it off on the outside like, like the old-fashioned meat. And because it's marbled, uh, you're stuck with it if you eat it. And it's, and it's still very high in cholesterol and saturated fat. Uh, and so, and actually I think maybe the high saturated fat, fat content of the skin of chicken and of the basically beef in general, or lamb, or any kind of red meat, the basic problem is, uh, is the high saturated fat content. Now, if we've got something that's got high saturated fat content, and it's marbled so we can't cut it off, what about the calories in meat? Well, it's going to have higher calories as well. Uh, meat, uh, eater, in fact, uh, anytime you have any fat, whether it be from a plant or an animal product, for every gram of fat, you're going to have nine calories. Whereas every gram of protein and carbohydrate, you've got about four calories. So right there, pound for pound, ounce for ounce, milligram per milligram, you've got twice as many calories in fat as you do the carbohydrate and protein. So that in itself makes meat a high calorie food. Does uh, that mean that meat eaters are heavier? You know, we've heard all kinds of Atkins diets and mm -hmm. high protein diets, all kinds of stuff keeps bombarding the people. Any new gimmick to sell books and make money seems to be the order of the day. But what about studies that look at vegetarians and meat eaters? Are meat eaters then the same as vegetarians, lighter than vegetarians? What's, what's, the, what's heavier than vegetarians? What, what, do you know about the average weight? Yeah, when we're talking about averages or the medium or the mean, uh, that means uh, you take a large group of people, you'll find those that are vegetarian are leaner than the meat eaters, even though all of the characteristics are the same. But you're going to have some people, and some of our viewers maybe say, well, look, I'm a meat eater and my wife isn't, and I am leaner than she is. But, so you have exceptions, but when you take a, the, a, a large population as a whole, you're going to find that, that the person who eats meat uh, several times a week is going to be probably, on an average, in the overweight category. In other words, um, we take and measure obesity and overweight and normal weight, normal weight people now by a body mass index. That's a formula we use. And if you eat meat, you're going to be pushed right over into the obese category. That means more than 25 BMI. Whereas the vegetarian is going to be, he's down in the 24 or the 23. So on a large population group studies, uh, the vegetarian will invariably, invariably be one to two uh, points lower than the meat eater. Now that has implications. Uh, that, that alone has implications because, you know, we know that uh, about 66% of Americans are overweight. And part of it is they are eating more meat today, more, uh, larger portions of meat. Now, you know, we have in our audience, and I'm sure some of you out there are looking at this program and wondering just where we're going with this. 
uh, we would like to have you continue to watch because I'm going to ask Stoy, what advice would you have for people who are meat eaters so that they could enjoy better health? Okay, there's some things that we can do. Number one, uh, you can, of course, first of all, choose the leanest cuts of meat from the grocery. Usually the loins are, um, are, are, are lower in calories than some of the other cuts of meat. So, so choose the leaner cuts of meat. Uh, ask your butcher, or you do it yourself, if there's any excess fat on the outside, cut that fat off. Uh, although I know it's going to be a challenge, because it's the fat that makes it taste nice, taste oh, good. Yeah. And so there, therefore people are reluctant to cut the fat off. But that's the hel unhealthy, unhealthiest part of it. The muscle part is, uh, is the healthier part of it, if you can call it healthier. So though that's the first thing to do, to cut the fat off as much as you can. And if you're using chicken or something like that, skin the chicken. I mean, after it's fried or whatever, take the skin off and give that to your cat or dog. And, but you eat just the meat itself. And that's another thing that we certainly could do to, uh, to reduce the calories and reduce the saturated fat as well. Now, you know, uh, you're saying that, but some pet lovers are not going to be feeling too happy about you giving stuff that you wouldn't eat to the cat or the dog. Because this well, you've is got a choice. You've got three choices. Eat it, give it to your cat or dog, throw it away. Yeah, maybe, maybe you know... You or give, give it, it to the, the husband or wife you don't love. <laughs> <laughs> so that quicker. <laughs> now, in the handling of meat, I just want to make a little point, because some people are handling meats, and they don't understand, uh, particularly poultry, is very prone to be contaminated with salmonella. It's not that the salmonella is actually in the meat. The salmonella is in the bowel of the chicken. But as the mm -hmm. chicken is killed, as the... Uh, fecal material of that uh, poultry becomes exposed, it may get on the meat mm -hmm. and so contaminate the meat. I'd like you to give a little bit of advice to meat eaters and particularly meat handlers because there's maybe some vegetarians who are handling uh, meat for their, for their spouse or other family And before members. I answer the question, there's even another uh, opportunity for vegetarians uh, to be, c their foods to be contaminated with meat, maybe at the supermarket because someone before you on that belt that goes around, you know, when you go to the large supermarkets, when they have that conveyor belt and you set your foods on there, if someone before that has set a package of meat on there and it just set it raw, the, the, not the raw meat, but the package Bloody. of meat, mm -hmm. somebody has handled that and then you set your bananas, not your bananas, but your peaches or, or some of the other foods down on that same place, it might pick up some of the salmonella or the E. coli. So even vegetarians have to watch. That's a long shot story. What about no, in the house? So, no, well, it's not so large. It's not no. nearly as big a problem no, as no, on your No, no, there's a greater board. problem. Yeah. The greater problem is people eating uh, raw meat. Now, that yes. little, people like lean red beef. They like mm. to see the blood, you know? Yeah. And men especially, they don't, they don't like that uh, if, we, if it's well cooked. And so that's a problem when the meat is not well cooked. So whatever you do, if you are eat a meat eater, cook your meat thoroughly. Not only on the outside, but the inside. Be sure you stick a probe in there and be sure that probe, uh, the temperature reaches the appropriate temperature. So that's another thing you can do is cook it properly. Don't eat red meat. And once you handle meat, uh, especially the raw meat or the packages of raw meat, wash your hands before you handle any other vegetables. Now, uh, and so this, this way is pretty well protected, and, and cooked meat uh, will, will protect you quite well. You don't want to barbecue meat, though, and probably, I don't know about um, uh, where we're filming this today, but I know in Texas and different places, and even some of the islands like Bali that we've been at, uh, they like barbecued meat. Barbecued why don't you meat like barbecued meat? What's, what's, oh, what's, I what's think people problem like with barbecued yeah, but meat. But why don't you the problem recommend with barbecued meat? barbecued meat is that it, uh, when you barbecue the meat, some of the fat falls down in the fire, drips down in the fire, and that heats very highly, and it produces certain chemicals that saturates the meat back again. It saturates the meat again from the smoke and from the, from the fire. And so that has been determined to be carcinogenic. In fact, that means cancer-causing. In fact, the American Institute for Cancer Research has looked at food-related cancers 
and uh, barbecued meat is number one on their list as meats that, that really may be an initiator of cancer and different Another organs. thing that we see a lot of use of meat is hamburger meat. I suppose this is a way of using cheaper cuts uh, and mincing it all up, grinding it all in together, putting it in there. And it's from hamburger meats that we see a lot of what they sometimes refer to as the hamburger disease. Uh, in medical terms, it's hemolytic uremic syndrome. It's a toxic, uh, a toxic uh, substance that's released by a coliform organism. Mm -hmm. You get a little coliform organism in some of the meat, you mix all of that stuff together, so now you've mixed it through the whole blob of the meat. And so you can get certain of these strains very readily mm -hmm. spread throughout the meat. Uh, it can kill. It can kill children particularly. It shuts their kidneys down. It melts their blood so that we mm -hmm. get you get hemolysis. They plug up the kidney uh, nephrons and so forth. Now, what again uh, would you, adv uh, you know, advocate to people who are wanting to use hamburger? First of all, have the butcher grind your own hamburger from pieces of meat that you see. Don't buy hamburger meat that's already ground because who knows, it might have taken all the scraps and, and hamburger, make, hamburger meat is very high in fat because they do the trimmings and the leftovers and, and hamburger meat can contain anything, any part of the, of the animal. Uh, whereas if you, have, if you buy your own piece of meat and have it ground yourself, you know exactly what's in there. Do and they so, ground it on the same machine that they ground the shop stuff on though? Probably. So <laughs> we're that's, why, the that's why you need to cook it. That's why yes. you need to cook it. So be sure whatever type of meat you eat, it's well cooked. You are a wonderful... No, no sushi, no sushi, no lean, rare beef, because this is a way that you can get sick. Now, the interesting thing, uh, if I... Are you supposed to be advocating how people can eat meat? Because you're I making me feel a little bit I didn't ask upset. my wife for permission to use her as an example, but I think, I hope she'll give me that permission. But she grew up in a meat-eating family, and uh, her family were not rich, and they used a lot of hamburger meat. And they had a lot of stomach intestinal upsets all the time. Someone had a stomach in, uh, in an upset of some kind. And when we got married, after a month or two, she says, you know, something's different. I've not been upset at all. I says, you know, I wonder if it is not because you're not eating, you know, cheap hamburger meat. But that, it, that could be a problem. You know, there are a lot of studies up on meat, and uh, our time goes so very, very quickly when we talk about topics like this. There are a lot of studies that have shown that meat eating is associated with uh, different problems. Tell me some of those problems. Just Number one, briefly. I think, is probably heart disease, and that's due to the saturated fat in the meats. Uh, and uh, the, sa the, the high saturated fat uh, and many, many studies have shown that raise your blood cholesterol, your serum cholesterol. And if you have a high serum cholesterol, let's say 250, 300, or something like that, as many meat eaters do, uh, they are prone to greater risk of heart disease. What about heart colon attacks. cancer? Uh, colon cancer is another one of those things, and probably the colon cancer, uh, we don't know all the mechanisms, but colon cancer is probably due to the fact that the meat does not have any fiber. When we are getting 25 to 50 grams of fiber a day, we have our bowels, our food, our excess food, our bulk of the food moves right through our, our track into the toilet. And, and we have a nice, Clean maybe track. daily, or, or at least every other day, we have several a bowel movement or two, and so it moves there. But when you eat a highly refined diet or a high meat diet, which is basically zero calories, zero fiber, uh, that tends to pack up and you become constipated. And they think maybe that uh, constipation lying in those intestinal walls for you know, days on, at an end uh, might irritate the colon and might develop the, might start the initiation of the cancer. I'm aware uh, of the, the study that came out of Loma Linda University that showed that there was a protective benefit from certain foods, even in meat eaters. Maybe you could t tell us yes, about that. Yes, and I think that's, that's uh, uh, something to give us a little courage for the meat eaters especially. And that is, two, actually it was two foods came out of Loma Linda, as well as now it's been verified by Harvard, a nurse's study, the Harvard doctor's study and other studies. But there's actually several studies now showing that not only uh, legumes, but nuts as well is protective against uh, heart disease as well as cancer, several cancers. 
And so if a meat eater can get enough legumes and enough fiber and enough nuts in their diet, uh, if they have any room left without gaining weight, too many calories, you know, if they have any, any, any room left, they might take a little meat because it really is the lack of the fiber and the phytonutrients in the legumes and nuts and other things that's actually keep you, keeping you from getting these diseases. So it's not the meat so much as the lack of the other. The problem is, you know, most meat eaters, uh, especially men especially, they like to have that steak center plate or that hamburger center dish. You know, uh, the french fries and the little salad that, that some of the fast food companies give you are never eaten. They're no. thrown away in the trash. It's only the hamburger. And that's the problem. It's, it's not that meat is so bad, it's that the other is so good. And you've got to have the other, otherwise you're going to suffer the consequences. So if you have to choose between something that's not so bad and something that is so good, it would seem to me that the choice would be so be good. Obvious. That's right. So good, yes. Now, another reason I think meat is popular is that people get in the habit of liking it. They, get, they like the texture, they like the, the taste, they like the flavor. Uh, and when they, st and if, you, if anyone in our audience is wanting to become a vegetarian, uh, it takes a while to make this switch over because you're going to be feeling empty. I don't remember my grandmother when she became a vegetarian. She, uh, she says, I always feel hungry. Uh, Junior, she called me Junior, she says, Junior, we, we, I need some protein, you know. And, well, she didn't, really didn't need protein. She was feeling the, I guess, the stimulating effects of the meat. And it took her several years to get over that. Uh, and other people will find that problem. But once you become a vegetarian like I would, uh, you probably would have the same opinion that I do, and that is, if meat was good for me, I would not eat it. Because I remember the first time I tried a steak. And it was in Waco, Texas. And I had done a nice job for some people, and they wanted to treat me. And so they took me out to dinner, and all that was available was, was steak. And I started chewing on this steak, and I chewed and chewed and chewed and chewed, and it wouldn't go down. It wouldn't go away, like, you know, the beans yes. and other things would. And so, uh, so I don't really like meat, so it's not a problem for me, but, but I think we have to But that story is not a good argument against uh, Oh, no. Or against oh, no. no. And I think as we come, you know, as we come to the end of this program, we have to make a few clear points. First of all, meat it may not be a, 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 a devil of a food but it's certainly not the best food. Mm -hmm. And I think, Stoy, most of us would agree that we should encourage meat eaters to reduce the amount of meat that they're eating for good health. I would. Stoy, I'd like to thank you for being with us in this program. You've certainly provided a lot of very interesting information. And to our viewers, I would like to say that it should be obvious to you that though meat is a food that may be necessary, for the most part, we can do much better with a vegetarian diet. We'd encourage you to incorporate that in yours.